All right, it's Wednesday, midday roughly, uh, January 27th here in the barn. We are physically here in the barn, not taking a walk. Not sure when we'll get our walk in today. Um, big show here, so let's get to it. Uh, I've got 10 NCAA games for you today. Yeah, well, you know, if I got a bunch of games, you generally can assume I won the night before. So that's what happened. We had more winners than losers last night. So now I'm feeling good. All right, let's let's see if we can build on that. Um, I don't know. It, 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 what do we have here? Now, if you watched yesterday's video, uh, I picked an early game and it took so long to navigate our production issues and get the thing up on the internet that the game had already tipped off. Uh, so, so that one was a loser, but I'm not counting it, you know. I, I Look, I, I think I'm justified. In other words, I was thinking about this, you know, had that game won and I put it up there after the thing had tipped off, people would scream bloody murder. Yeah, you can't count that. You're past posting. That's illegal. You're cheating. It's like, well, I guess that goes both ways then, right? Uh, so we're not counting that loser Tulsa game. That doesn't count then. So otherwise, we had five games. Ohio, that was a runaway winner. Uh, good for them, good for me. Uh, Mississippi State, they hung on to get the cover, although they lost the game. Why is Tennessee ranked anywhere? That team just looks so unimpressive to me. Uh, Oklahoma, winning outright at Texas. Boomer Sooner, yay. Uh, Alabama, I don't know what happened there. I would given up on that game, honestly. I was watching it, and Kentucky was just... <sighs> Kentucky... Looks like maybe a team to pay attention to maybe in another week or so. I mean, they, they, they're they so tough on the boards, and they play pretty good defense. Uh, they just can't shoot. Once they start to work an offense where they can start to occasionally make a shot, that's going to be a dangerous team because they rebound like nobody's business. Um, but I'd given up because Kentucky was leading with like six minutes to go, Turn back, it's 70 to 59 Alabama. Game's over, I cover. It's like, hmm, how'd that happen? Well, I don't know. I'm sure John Cal Perry knows how it happened. I'm not sure he has an answer for it. So that was a winner. So four winners and then a runaway loser with St. Louis uh, losing outright to Dayton as a nine and a half point favorite. So four wins, one loss. Hooray. Uh, so what else? What else we got there for you? I think we got a new subscriber. We're getting to the point again now where the subscribers are coming in so infrequently that we can welcome them one by one. They were coming in during the the, the Bobolinsky flood like to an hour, and I, you know it was just you couldn't keep track of them all. But then you know now uh, we can welcome. I think his name is Ryan Jackson. So welcome, salute to you. Uh, all right, what else? Um, what else? I actually made a couple notes here. I heard something funny uh, today. Um, these legalized uh, 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 sports apps, you know, if your state is lucky enough to have legalized sports betting, you can download an app on your phone, you can bet, but the phone tracks you as to where you're at. So you have to be within the state of Pennsylvania to bet on the uh, Pennsylvania legalized sports book app, whichever one you may have, bar stool, what have you. Uh, and it, it, it's some kind of, I don't know, I'll throw a word out there, geofence, I barely know what that means, uh, where the phone somehow talks to the satellites in the, uh, in the space as to where you are and it won't let you bet if you're outside the physical boundaries of that state. Uh, well, I just heard a friend of mine, he uh, lives on a border of a state. He lives in a non-betting state. He has a sport betting app on his phone for the neighboring state. And he has discovered that if you get close enough to the border of the neighboring state, the sport app thinks you're in that state. So, you know, I, get it. I, I have this vision of him walking around 
like this, you know, trying to get a signal as he holds his phone out closer and closer to the state that has legalized sports betting, you know, until he gets, you know, you're in, and then he makes his bet. I just find that funny. I guess sooner or later, all the states will have sports betting, you know, I guess, just like we'll be able to smoke weed and bet on sports all everywhere in the United States. Uh, won't be able to speak our minds freely, but by God, we'll be able to bet on sports and smoke weed. So, I guess that's a trade-off. Life's a trade-off, right? Uh, let's see. Phillies fans. Uh, we re-signed JT Real Muto. Uh, I, I, for those of you who think it's a good idea to re-sign a catcher for 23 mil a year, uh, who's over 30 years old, a uh, five-year contract. So, at the end of his contract, this guy's going to be 34, 35 years old. So, you're expecting him to, what, catch at 34 years old, 35 years old, you're paying them $23 million a year to do that. I, you know, I just don't see the logic in that. Uh, you know, the, the Phillies are painting themselves into a corner because they have no other credible catching options. Uh, but, geez, I mean, geez. I mean, does no one else in this town remember the Lance Parrish era? I remember it, and it sucked. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, another dumb move by the Phillies. Yeah, let's see. The Hall of Fame. Um, Hall of Fame, of course, no one was uh, voted in. Um, you know, I, I, I view this two ways. I mean, one, they kept out the Reuters. I'm all for that. I think, unfortunately, you know, I glanced at Barstool. And uh, if you don't know what Barstool is, you know, get with the times. It's a blog frequented, I would say, mostly by under 50-year-olds, people without their AARP cards. And they're, they want, you know, they definitely want the Reuters in, the younger people. They want the Reuters in. And sooner or later, they're just simply going to outlive us. Uh, I think that's pretty safe to say that the... People under 50 at some point are going to outlive us people that have the AARP cards. We're the ones keeping the Reuters out, young people. Just so you know, I am keeping them out. Me and people like me. We're keeping out the Reuters. They don't belong in there. They're not getting in over my dead body, which is probably how they will get in. You know, Hank Aaron's dead. That's one less person that wants them out. Uh, so, eventually... You know, I, he, he gave an I looked this up. He gave an interview. And Aaron is less vocal about the Reuters than I thought he was. But he did say, and he wouldn't name names, but he said, if they put a Reuter in there, there are going to be people that just walk off the stage. You know, members of the Hall of Fame, they're simply just going to walk off the stage. And he seemed pretty comfortable in making that comment. So I thought, well, that'd be kind of interesting to see happen. I mean, that... It, you know, I, 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 you know, I kind of would like to see that happen. Shame, shame, we shame you. You know, that sort of thing. But at any rate, uh, people like that are dying off. I will die eventually. Don't hold your breath. And um, then, you know, you'll get your Reuters in. They don't belong in there. Damn it. You know, these guys willfully, knowingly, gleefully wrecked. All the baseball records that we used to, you know, tune in for. The home run races. Uh, can somebody break 60 this year? You know, uh, will somebody approach the great Aaron's record? You know, all those are gone now. Gone. You know, it's just been, baseball's been relegated. All the things that were unique and special about baseball, one by one, are being tossed. So... And that was just some other things that they taught. You know, what sport can you name records right off the top of your head? Who holds the most points in the NBA? I don't know. And I don't know the number either. Who holds the most goals in hockey? Um, it's probably Gretzky, but I don't know the number. Uh, who has the most yards passing in the NFL? Again, I, I could take a guess who has it. I have no idea the number of yards, though. But who has the most home runs? Well, I used to know. That was 755 with Hank Aaron. Now I don't know what it is because I don't give a shit about Barry Bonds. He cheated. 
He cheated. It was blatant. It was obvious. It was in your face. Uh, so, you know, that's my rant on the Reuters. Now, my other thought on the Hall of Fame is Kurt Schilling absolutely belongs in the Hall of Fame. He's in my Hall of Fame. I'm going to start my own Hall of Fame, I think. Just, you know, because. Anyway, the Reuters never get in my Hall of Fame, but Kurt Schilling is welcome into my Hall of Fame. One thing they never take into account when they're figuring out who's in, who's out, and they go in there, you know, obviously one of the things they calculate is, are you a Republican? You know, apparently, I didn't see, it's probably not on the ballot that that's one of the criteria, but obviously it is. You know, that's one of the reasons Schilling's not in. Uh, but another reason is, what did you do in the postseason? No one ever takes that into account. It's like, this was one of the most money pitchers in baseball history. In the postseason, you're generally facing, as a pitcher, the best of the best. So if you were able to maintain, you know, the hitters too, same deal. If you're able to maintain your regular season averages, you know, that means to me you were a pretty good postseason player. Well, Schilling made his averages so much better in the postseason. That's very unusual. He was better in the postseason than he was in the regular season. He's up against the best of the best, and he's even better against those guys than he was in the regular season. But, you know, we just don't take that into account, I don't think, when we're determining who is better than who in our discussions. So, showing to me should definitely be in there. Uh, I think it's pretty clear he's not in there simply because he's got a big mouth, um, which right now, I guess, is about the biggest crime you could commit in this country. So, there you have it. Uh, that's my uh, five, ten minute rant on those topics. All right, let's talk uh, college basketball, huh? Like I said, we're uh, on a semi roll here. Uh, and by that, I mean we've won uh, two games in a row, or one day in a row. Um, there's a blue wagon that showed up here in the studio. It's. it's you know, I can't, honestly, I don't remember if it was here or not. <laughs> it's like, the wife could be throwing crap out here, and, and, and I wouldn't even know it because I can't, it's like, was that here before? You know, I get gaslit all the time, you know, where I'm, I know something happened, and then I'm told it didn't happen, then I'm like, I don't know, I'm getting old, I guess that's right, that didn't happen, even though I saw it happen, you know, that type of thing. So I don't know if this wagon's always been here or not. Uh, I haven't quite figured out a use for it yet. What do we do with it? It's made of canvas. If I try to get in this thing, I'll rip it. So we won't do that. We'll just move it out of the way. Uh, Virginia Tech, we're going to take them as a pick them over Notre Dame. I don't know this is totally the opposite of what we normally do. This just looks... We're trying to find the right answer, and right now the opposite, we're doing the opposite sometimes, we're doing what I actually think sometimes, we're just trying, it's all kind of random right now, so I don't even know how we won four out of five games yesterday, don't even know. Well anyway, we're taking Virginia Tech uh, at Notre Dame, I think we've had some luck fading Mike Bray at Notre Dame, that's a guy that may not have a job much longer, so... Uh, it's a pick em. so Virginia Tech. Uh, here's something I would never normally do. Lay 11 in conference. Um, eh, I mean, it just seems like a hell of a lot of points. But uh, Florida State's just been going great guns here lately. Uh, just killing people. I, I, I like that team. So if I'm going to lose, I'm going down with a team I like. So we're going with Florida State, lay the 11 there. Uh, Ohio State, Penn State, I didn't circle this just to make subscriber X keep watching just so he couldn't take a screenshot and not listen to what I have to say. So, we are taking Ohio State. You know, this is another opposite deal where Penn State always gives us trouble. Uh, I don't think Ohio State plays particularly well at home. And uh, there's certainly no home court advantage or no fans. But uh, opposite, you know. I, I did, I, if we're doing that, 
I do want a coaching edge. That's the one thing I demand. And I think we have that here. You know, I think Chris Holtman is a good coach. I think he is a good coach. The guy that got coached in Penn State is just a interim fill-in retread. Um, a Pat Chambers assistant who wasn't as good as Pat Chambers, but is now forced to be the head coach because they got rid of Pat Chambers because he did, I don't even know what he did. So, uh, seven, I, I'm sure he did something. I'm not saying he didn't do something bad. I just don't know what it is. Literally, I have not researched it. So, it, it, I'm sure if I read three articles, I'd say, oh, yeah, that is bad. Um, so, Ohio State, they're minus a seven and a half. Uh, here in the ACC, we want the eight points with Wake Forest. That honestly strikes me as what we normally would do. <laughs> so, I don't know that's the opposite. Uh, we, we are going to take Wake Forest in the eight. Here, here it is definitely the opposite. Again, laying a huge number in conference. That's not something we normally do. Uh, but, but, you know, this is a play against Jerry Stackhouse. Sorry, Mr. Stackhouse. But uh, Barstool, I, I keep mentioning them. I go there a lot. There's good information on Barstool, I'm telling you. Um, Jerry Stackhouse apparently is getting in Twitter wars or, or whatever, email wars with fans. What are you doing, dude? I mean, you're, you're, and he's losing, you know, <laughs> you know, he's getting in these fights with him and he's losing. So, um, he, he has not done a very good job at Vanderbilt. Um, hey, you know, who would, but still, dude, don't get in a fight with the fans. Anyway, fade Stackhouse, lay the 12 and a half with Florida. All right, other side of the ledger. Uh, Western Carolina will take them plus the one and a half. That strikes me something we normally would do. Here's a put up. These are all one star just because I'm so lost right now. I wouldn't have confidence to do anything right. Uh, we, we like Old Miss. I mean, this is an opposite play, I think, just because Arkansas is going great guns and now all of a sudden they've hit a speed bump and the things are, wheels are getting a little wobbly at Arkansas. So, we'll take a shot there with Old Miss plus the four and a half. Uh, okay, here we didn't circle these just for suspense. Louisville, we like Louisville. They're getting one and a half at Clemson. I think they had their bump in the road these last two weeks. They haven't been playing real well. They got hammered by Florida State. Uh, they got hammered by somebody else, Miami. Uh, and, and I don't know what's happened, but I think they're a little bit back on the on the balance beam. Clemson, I think, is a team they can handle. Uh, if you look at the Pomeroy rankings, Pomeroy thinks they're better than Clemson, 38 to 50. So we'll take the one and a half points, and we'll take Chris Mack at Louisville. All right, this is definitely opposite. You know, we got Baylor minus 24 against Kansas State. I wouldn't touch Bruce Weber with a 10-foot pole. This guy lost to Fort Hayes State earlier in the year. I don't know where that is. Is there a place called Fort Hayes? Well, if so, they are their own state and they have a college that can beat Bruce Weber in Kansas State. Well, we will take Bruce Weber because this is not Fort Hayes State. This is Baylor. And somehow, this guy is going to lose by less than 24 points to Baylor. The opposite. We're doing the opposite on this one. So we'll take Kansas State and the huge points. And then lastly, uh, Utah State, late night. Got to have that late night game, right? I mean, give the people what they want. You sure? You sure about that? I think he's up at that hour. I think that guy, he's usually the first one into the barn. And uh, I, he, he either lives in Hawaii or maybe Europe. And he's always up at odd hours, just like I am. So you gotta have that late night game. And Utah State, they lost, what was it, yesterday? To UNLV in a low scoring game. The game was in the 50s. I mean, that is not Utah State's game. So, my thought here is that, look, Utah State, I just think that's a, a premium team. I, I don't know what I mean by that, uh, but they, 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 they're explosive, they can score. These guys shot like three for 22 or something like that from three. They just, I, I, I'm wrong on that. 
Maybe it was, it was better than that, maybe. It was something like that. They shot like shit. So I'm thinking these guys are going to hit some threes tonight. That'll be all it takes to outscore UNLV. And Utah State's going to get their vengeance tonight. Uh, that is the thinking. All right, so there you have that. That's that. So, good. Thanks for uh, being a new subscriber, Mr. Uh, Jackson. Um, good, great. I uh, don't know what the schedule is going to be going forward here. We'll try to get you at least one or two more videos before the end of the week. We've got the door open because I like to look at the sunshine. Unfortunately, that lets the wind come in and blow shit around. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. We, we, uh, the end of the week schedule's up in the air, but at least there's no football this weekend, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but we'll get you something. We'll get you something. Thanks for being here. Let me show you the scores up close. And verify that the video is still running. All right. For smooth. Doing all this for this guy. He disappeared. He doesn't comment on the board anymore. But there you can see it pretty closely there, I think. Get a little closer. And try to hold it still, I guess. We got such high-tech production values here in the barn, it's not even funny. All right, there you have it. So, good betting, good college basketball. Goodbye for now.